Well, this morning, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about serving the least, least of these. Um, the first service, like I said, I put the wrong verse up there, and we missed a little bit of it because that's such a crucial uh, part of ministry of Jesus and for our lives as Jesus followers, this idea of serving uh, the least of these. And this morning, I want to talk a little bit about that concept in particular, serving the least of these, but more, more, you know, more specifically, serving the least of these together as a church. Um, this has been something that's been on my heart for a little bit. Um, a lot of it is because I just got back from a mission trip experience uh, down in uh, Cozumel, Mexico with our, with our team. I see some of our team members out here. Um, and that's a trip I've been taking for many years, and every time it kind of reignites my uh, love for serving together as a church. This reignites my passion for serving together and trying to get as many people involved in serving as possible. Um, it's a really special week because we get to spend our time serving kids, and this is the big one, seeing the gospel changing lives right in front of us. And that's a big part of our, of our, of our trip experience is we see uh, these kids who have nothing. <laughs> they have nothing before they come. They are the, the kind of what they say is they're orphaned, abandoned, and abused children. And one thing they, they, they told us many years ago, I don't know if they still use this language, but um, the, those kids are there because nobody else wants them. And I've shared that before, and that's hard for me to even say because um, I can't imagine, I can't imagine not wanting your own kid, okay? Um, but we get to spend the week serving together as a group, as a church, as a body of believers to show these kids and the staff that serves them that we love them, we care for them, and that they are not forgotten and abandoned. And we're talk- I'm talking about service today with you, knowing that you're not all going to be going down to Mexico to serve. <laughs> um, I'd love for you to. If you want to, come talk to me. I'll put you in touch with some of our mission team leaders. But um, that's not necessarily uh, the mission opportunity for you or the service opportunity for you. But I do know that there is a place for every single person in this room to get plugged in and serving alongside and with their local church for the advancement of the gospel in our community and around the world. So today, I want to share with you three reasons why I think you should serve. Three reasons why I think you should get involved. If you're already involved, three reasons why I think you should stay involved and get even deeper in your ministry. Because these are three life-changing reasons that not only affect the people we're serving, but also um, ourselves. Also your own spiritual walk, your own personal faith journey. So before I jump into that, though, I'll give you a little bit of background on on me. Um, I uh, have been going down to serve in Mexico since I was... 14, so 10 years ago. Um, But even before that, my parents had me involved in serving with my church for years before that. And I grew a love for that because, honestly, a lot of my friends served with me. So I made friends. I grew deeper relationships through our service opportunities. Um, So I'm, I'm really passionate about this. I do know, though, that none of us have time None of, us, none of us have time. Realistically, if I'm, I'm going to get to the end of this message today, and I'm going to ask all of you to take a next step. And the first thought that's going to pop in your mind, I'm sure, because it would, it would me, is I don't have time for that. I already have too much to do. There's already too much in my world. I already can't get everything I need to done, especially with school starting soon. I just, I don't have time. But I want to take that thought. I want to address it, and then I want to pin it, Okay. And the, I, I made the um, connection. Have anybody seen the movie Bolt, Disney? Anybody seen that? Okay, there's a super annoying guy as a character that every time the, uh, the main character says something he doesn't like, he goes, let's pin that one. It, it made me want to get up and walk out of the room. It was so annoying. Um, but that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to take that idea and we're just going to pin it right up here. And we're going to come back to it because I think once we start talking about areas that you uniquely can get involved and serve, I think you're going to wish you had done it sooner. And the idea of not having enough time is not even going to enter your head anymore. Just the thought of being asked to do something else, I know, just kind of start, you start thinking through the logistics of how it's going to get done. But I want you to sit that aside for, this, for just about 20 minutes, maybe 15 if I can go fast. <laughs> um, And we'll address that here again um, at the end. 
So the first reason why I think, oh, I'm sorry, I missed a couple slides. Um, this, uh, okay, okay, I'm really glad I had this in here because this is great. This is uh, the first year I went down to serve in Mexico with Grace Chapel. Okay, this was 10 years ago. Um, some of you may recognize some of the people in this picture um, because right here is Milt Shimlock, one of our elders. Right here is Jenny Tidwell, our current mission team leader. Um, right here is Jan Steiner, who went for several years. Um, my first experience serving with that group was combined with East Cobb, which was cool. So 10 years before I ended up here uh, serving alongside all of these people, we just happened to be together. And I was telling some people in between the two services that like for Milt right here, I don't even, I didn't even know he was there. I was, I didn't, I don't even remember him being there, but um, he, we, we, we crossed paths, which is pretty cool. This was our team this past year. I shared this a couple weeks ago. We had almost 60 people total that was serving um, kids down there. And like I said in the beginning, it's such an impactful work because you see these two right here. And if you're looking on this screen, I'm looking at the lady down in the front in the blue shirt and the kid in the red. Um, her name is Jenny. She's with a church in Texas that we joined with. And then this is Johnny right here. Um, Jenny treats Johnny like her own son. And it is just the best thing. Like she treats him like her own son and she's making a difference in Johnny's life that he'll never forget, that will make an eternal impact. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. But moving on to the first reason why I think you should get involved um, in, in service of some kind. You build relationships that last a lifetime. Has anybody had that happen before? When you've been like serving with people, you develop bonds and relationships with people that you never thought would happen. Has that happened before? It's happened for me, right? Um, I, you know, I told this, love telling this story because it's just, it's funny to me. Uh, my first trip down to Cozumel, I had never been out of the country before, never really been anywhere that far without my parents. Um, I hated it, hated it. I'll say it again, I hated it. I was miserable the whole time, okay? Anybody familiar with the term culture shock? Okay, so I, I pulled up the definition because it so perfectly represents my state of mind at this time. It was a st state of bewilderment and distress experienced by an individual who is suddenly exposed to a new, strange, or foreign so social and cultural environment. Y'all, I was bewildered and I was distressed, okay? <laughs> um, we got off the airplane and it, all of a sudden everything's in Spanish. I don't, I don't know how to speak Spanish. Definitely didn't know how to speak Spanish then. We get in the, ta in the taxis, and these people are driving like I've never experienced before. I thought I was not going to make it to our house, okay? Um, and then we got to our house. I, I, as, on the drive, I start seeing buildings that are pink and purple and blue and turquoise, and I'm like, where are we? I think my favorite one is they don't have them as much anymore, but they used to have these, like, cast iron grates that stuck out of the ground that had, like, baskets on the top. They were everywhere. They were for people to throw their garbage in, okay? But they were the weirdest, weirdest things. I was so out of my comfort zone. And then to make it worse, our team leader decided to take us to lunch when we showed up. I figured we were going to go to a restaurant. We did go to a restaurant, but this restaurant was in some lady's living room that we had never met before. So, <laughs> and she spoke no English, had no idea any of the food on the menu. It was, it was crazy. I was definitely bewildered and distressed. <laughs> But luckily, though, I was uh, traveling with several longtime family friends. Um, in particular, I was traveling with a family, last name is Kessler, Julie and Vance Kessler and their family. I grew up with them and, and their, their kids, uh, Keenan and Caitlin. And I just happened to be staying in a house with them. Um, now, I had known them my whole life. Julie uh, changed my diapers as a kid. Um, she babysat me. My mom's over here, and she can probably tell you some, some stories from that. Um, but I've known them for a long time. Um, I didn't know them nearly as well before than I did when I, when I got home from that trip. <laughs> we grew a bond just by serving together and being in an uncomfortable situation together that um, even though I don't go to church with them anymore, I'm still, I'm still in contact with them all the time. I still love going to see them. I still love spending time with them because we invested in serving together. And in fact, whenever I communicate with Julie in particular, I refer to her as my Mexican mother and she refers to me as her Mexican son, okay? So we just built a relationship that um, is, is, is lasting and um, was really valuable through our service together. And anybody that's gone on that trip knows that's the case. Our team just kind of melds together because of our working towards a common goal. But 
outside of international trips here at our church, if you serve on the host team, you know how fun it is to be in that team atmosphere when you're, you're all working towards a common goal. If you go to Lakewood, you love the people that you serve with. You build relationships that last a lifetime. And those, I believe, those that serve together, they stay together. They're, they're your people. They're your church. If you want your church to become more like your family, you want it to not really feel like you're going to church, more like you're going to hang out with your family and worship together and, and spend time together, then I would recommend you get involved serving in a meaningful way. Number two, you pave the way for the gospel to spread. So I want to illustrate this uh, by using a story from the gospels. Um, it's a story you've all probably heard before if you've been around uh, for a little while. Um, it's in John chapter four, and it's the story of the Samaritan woman at the well. Anybody heard that story before? We can participate. Yes, excellent. Um, it's a great story, and it, it's got a lot of different facets to it. And oftentimes we use it as a um, illustration of how Jesus is reaching across cultural lines and reaching out to somebody that um, is, is an outcast. And that is definitely true. But as I was reading it recently, I, um, something, something else hit me. So let me read some of it for you. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's, it's super long. Um, but let me read some key points for you, and then we'll talk about it. John chapter 4, starting in verse 3, if you want to follow along. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually, he came to the Samaritan village near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. We're going to pause there for just a second. I love how the gospel writers include some little details like this, okay? Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Even though we know Jesus was fully human and fully God, sometimes we elevate Jesus to a status, we, we kind of take away his humanity a little bit when we think about Jesus. And passages like this, where Jesus was tired from a long walk, he sat wearily beside the well about noontime, just gives me a picture of a Jesus who is more like us than we sometimes uh, connect. <laughs> a Jesus who has that fully human side, just like we do. He gets tired, he gets worn out. Um, and in, when we're serving in Mexico, I just thought about this. Um, after a morning of work, the entire team is sitting wearily beside the well about noontime because it's hot and we're sweaty and we're tired, just like Jesus was. And I love, love those details. Moving forward in verse seven. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you were speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. Jumping down just a little bit to verse 15. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water, then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get water. And Jesus says, go and get your husband, Jesus told her. The woman replied, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. And as you can imagine, she was pretty surprised, okay, because she had never met Jesus before, and all of a sudden he knows all this stuff about her. She said, sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So we're going to jog down just a little bit more, but like I'm just picturing this scene. <laughs> she just met Jesus, and he's telling her all this information about herself. Probably some pretty like hard things for her to hear, too, that she's kind of embarrassed about. Um, but Jesus knows, knows all and is talking to her about it. And we're going to jog over here to verse 25 um, when the woman replies after he, she and Jesus are talking a little bit. She says, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water uh, jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. So I skipped over a few parts in here just because it, it is longer section. Um, you should go back and read the whole thing because it's a great story. But I wanted to focus on a couple pieces here, um, really focusing on how um, Jesus started the conversation. If you notice, Jesus didn't come and start the conversation as, hey, you're sinning. <laughs> Here's everything you're doing. You need, you need the gospel. Here, let me save you. How did he start the conversation? Somebody shout it out. How did, how did he start the conversation? 
Can I have some water? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for responding. I love that. Please can I have some water? He just, he started a conversation. He started, he, he began a relationship with this woman. And then as they talked, they got to know each other a little bit. Then he started to speak some truth into her life, right? He started to, um, to share uh, his coming kingdom. He started to share his good news with her. And finally, he gets to the point where she is talking about the Messiah and he gets to tell her, I am the Messiah. And then she runs back to her village, okay? Somebody pointed this out to me at one point. I can't remember who it was, but she ran back to her village, this woman who was probably an outcast in her own village, and she pulled all of these people out to come see Jesus. But the disciples came back with no one. (laughs) And I think it's telling because she was so overflowing with the gospel message that she just wanted to tell everybody. So how does the story connect to paving the way for the gospel to spread? Well, the story connects because oftentimes the best way to spread the gospel is through building relationships with other people. And the relationships are really the primer for the gospel message to catch. And while there is a time and place, right, for us to stand on a street corner and for us to just to be preaching and and spreading the message just that way, for a lot of us, a really good way to do that is by building relationships with other people, giving us the groundwork and the currency to speak truth and the gospel into their lives. So I think about this when we look at our Lakewood team. If you're not familiar, our Lakewood encouragement team is a group from our church. We send about 20 or so people down every other week to just worship with some of our brothers and sisters at Lakewood Church of Christ in South Atlanta. Um, There's just, there's a couple to-dos there, like we'll make breakfast for them, for the kids and serve them, but the main part of that is just to be there. The main part is just to be there with them, to build relationships with the people there so that we have the opportunity to speak truth in life into their situations when the time comes. In, our, in Mexico, I love seeing some of the long-standing relationships there. The way that, that the children's home works down, down there is we have 30 or something so kids, and each kid has four to five sponsor families. These sponsor families are not supposed to just send money. That's like one thing that it's like, okay, you can send, we, we need you to send money because they need to eat, right? <laughs> but we want a lot more from you. They call us to a higher standard. And a part of that is building a relationship with your kid. I'm looking at Miss Boanne right here. She does a great job of it. She has, she's had a couple kids down there at this point, but she builds a relationship with them in a way that they text her and ask her questions. Like while she's here, they will ask her for advice on how to walk through life. And they're 2,000 miles away, right? Um, I've shared this a couple times, but Jenny Tidwell, she... Um, has several kids that call her mom and grandma. And like, I mean, she, she invests in the life of these kids and she has earned the right, I've seen it, Boanne has earned the right to speak the truth of the gospel into their lives. Whereas if they weren't building those relationships, the opportunity for them to speak truth and power into their lives would not have been there. So relationships really are the primer for the gospel to catch. And life change happens, we see this through relationships. We see these kids' lives in Mexico changing through the relationships they have with their sponsors. We see our uh, Lakewood team changing lives through their involvement in Lakewood. We see our His Way teams changing lives through their involvement with our His Way ministry. Life change happens through relationships. So the second reason why I think you should get involved serving with a team here at our church is because you help to pave the way for the gospel to take hold. Last reason, this is simple, we become more like Jesus. We become more like Jesus. In our first service, uh, Jeremy Mitchell gave our communion comments. And if you don't know Jeremy, he's the director of His Way Atlanta. Um, And he just happened to connect some things together that were that that were were really meaningful. He actually shared some of the the Good Samaritan, or that's a different story, the, the the woman at the well story, during his communion comments. And he was just a really good example because he is. Um, somebody who benefits from your service. His ministry benefits from you getting involved. So as he was talking about communion, he hit on the subject of Jesus being a servant, right? He, he, he really hammered that point home because Jesus really was the ultimate servant, right? He spent his ministry serving the people around him. He spent his ministry pouring out himself so that others could have life and life to the full, Right? And eventually, he gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we could eventually partner with him on his work of the gospel. So when you choose to serve meaningfully to get involved with your church, you become more like Jesus 
instantly. <laughs> right when you make that decision that you want to get involved in spreading the gospel and serving, you immediately become more like Jesus. And we as a church become more like the Jesus community that he envisioned. So the bottom line to all this is that when we decide to serve with our local church, we get the privilege of helping to bring heaven to earth. We get the privilege to bring heaven to earth. It's not, oh, we have to get to church early at 8 o'clock to be on the host team. It's, man, I'm so excited we get to be at church at 8 o'clock in the morning to help on the host team. Like, I can't wait, right? How many of you have ever done that? I've never, I've never done that. <laughs> Um, we get the privilege of helping to bring heaven to earth because it really is that. It's a privilege. It's an honor to be called in to the mission of Jesus. Jesus, like we, I said just a minute ago, 2,000 plus years ago, he paid the ultimate price by being murdered for a crime he did not commit. Pretty brutal murder too. Like, <laughs> um, and then three days later, he was risen from the dead and invited all of us to join into his mission. He gave us eternal life. He gave us forgiveness from sins. But on top of that, he said, hey, I want you to join me in my mission. I want you to join me in my mission. I don't just want you to sit on the sidelines. I don't just want you to just take all the benefits and just sit and let everybody else do the work. No, I want you to be involved in my mission. And what's so cool is that he created opportunities where each of us can uniquely get involved and serve in a way that only we can. So when we decide to serve with our local church, we get the privilege of helping to bring heaven to earth. And here's the deal. I talked a lot about Mexico today, but that's just one opportunity. That's just one place that you can get involved. I'll tell you, I'd love for all of you to join us next year. <laughs> we'd have a problem trying to get everybody down there and, you know, all that. But we'd love for you all to join us next year. But I recognize that that's not everybody's service opportunity. That's not where everybody is necessarily uniquely gifted. One of the great things about a church, though, is we have opportunities for everybody to get involved. We've got things like our Lakewood team, which I talked about um, earlier. You're just going down and serving, serving people. Like you're sitting there, you're worshiping with them, you're encouraging them, you're talking with them. Our Lakewood team. We have our care team, which is just kind of getting started, where I was talking to somebody about this uh, just a little bit ago. One of the teams on our care team is literally the chicken soup ministry, okay? Somebody's sick, it's like, hey, we need chicken soup. Like, go deliver it. Like, if, if, you're, if you're a cook, that's a great way for you to get involved. We have a finance team on our care team that helps people work through their personal finances. If you're a finance person, you can help out on our care team. We have a home team as part of that, as part of that care group. If you love doing service projects or you love doing home projects, you love building and construction, like our care team could use you in a unique way that only you can serve. We have our production team. And I know that doesn't always sound like, hey, we're in the trenches serving on the production team. But our production team helps create this environment to where we can worship together, to where you can hear what's being said. And this room is not as big of a deal, but in there, if you've ever been in there when the mic stopped working, you can't hear anything, right? Um, they help to facilitate an environment to where we can hear the gospel, we can worship together, and to where we can invite other people to hear that gospel as well. The host team, or Atlanta Inner City Ministry, they are partners, we talked about, they kind of partner with Lakewood, but they are serving the community uh, in inner city Atlanta, the Lakewood Heights community in particular, an incredibly in need area in our very own city. They're providing food assistance, they're providing Bible studies for children, like they are, they are, they are serving their community and there are opportunities for you to get involved there. Our host team, who's on our host team here? Raise your hand. If you're on our host team in any capacity, raise your hand. A lot of you, okay? Um, the host team is the team that helps create an atmosphere to where guests feel welcome being here, to where we can create a space where people can hear the gospel. The host team is making a difference every single week. Our family ministries, our kids and youth ministries. Man, I've gotten to serve with our youth this past year, and one of the most rewarding things for me is seeing relationships develop between our youth and their small group leaders, or our youth and some of our other youth volunteers see those relationships blossoming in a way to where trusted adults who are far along in their faith, who know what they're, who know what they're talking about, are able to speak truth and life into teenagers who are navigating through high school and middle school. It's been so rewarding to see that uh, take hold. His Way, talked about His Way Atlanta just a little bit with Jeremy Mitchell, who's a director. Um, there are a bunch of opportunities for you to do Bible studies, for you to hang out with them just Kind of like Lakewood, just chilling, just like, you know, spending time together. There are a ton of opportunities at His Way. Finally, our adult ministries, our men's and women's ministries, they do work um, to help encourage each other, but also to encourage the community. There are so many ways that you uniquely can get involved in the mission of Jesus. 
and the mission of making disciples and the mission of changing lives for the gospel. There are so many opportunities that you have. And I told you at the beginning, I was going to, I was going to ask, I was going to give you an ask at the end here. It's a very simple ask. I want everybody to go to this link and I want you to fill out the form. This is not an obligation to serve, okay? This is not you saying, I want to sign up for this ministry. This is a, hey, I want more information about this. I want, I want to learn more about what's happening at Lakewood. Can you tell me what's going on? I may want to get involved. You never know. You never know what you can't, you, you don't know what you can't do until you ask, right? So I want you to fill out this form. Uh, somebody will be in touch with you this week. Uh, the, the URL, if you're not able to see it, is just bit.ly slash serve with East Cobb. We're going to send it out uh, later today. But I want everybody to fill out that form, whether you serve now or not, because there are opportunities for all of us. Whether you have some physical disabilities, there's opportunities for you to serve. Whether you have some time limitations, there are opportunities for you to serve. Whether you have all the time in the world, I'm sure we can find you some areas to serve. <laughs> there are places for all of you to get involved in life change happening through the gospel. And I don't want you to miss it. So I only saw a few cell phones just a minute ago. Okay, what's happening? I only saw a few cell phones. I want everybody to fill out this form before we leave. Um, bit.ly slash serve with East Cobb. Um, fill out that form again. Not an obligation. You're not signing up for anything. All you're doing is saying, I want more information about this ministry. So I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to say a prayer. I'm going to invite us to sing again. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for gathering all of us together to worship and be encouraged um, by each other's presence. Thank you for giving us this space that we can meet every week. Also, thank you for the gift that you've given us on the cross, not just for the gift of eternal life and, 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 um, and a clean slate from our sins, but also the gift of being able to join with you in the mission of changing lives. Every time we get the opportunity to connect with somebody who's far from you, we have the opportunity to change a life for, you, for your glory. And we thank you for that opportunity. Thank you that you called us into that. Pray that all of us um, feel and respond to that, uh, that calling of service. And I pray for a blessing over all of our weeks. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing. <laughs>